Clark here, and this video is going to go over the 2023 FRQ number two, which is all about class. So we're going to write a whole class um, from scratch. So we have the question involving methods that distribute text across lines of an electric sign. Okay, so we have a specific um, text to be displayed. Um, we're going to write the complete class sign, which contains a constructor and two methods. So constructor, two methods, and probably a couple of variables as well. So right here, it says two parameters. So first things first, I'm going to set up my public class sign. And then I have my starter and, and first and end brackets. And you can always look up here and okay, how do I write that public class? Is it private class or whatever? And it says right there, public class. So use some, use some test sense maybe here and there. Uh, but for now, I have a parameter a string. And so since that's my parameter, I'm going to make that my private instance variable as well. Private string that contains the message. Okay, message is, I'm just going to say M. M is my message. Got it. Okay, then the second parameter is an int. So when it says parameter, I think of that as my private instance variable. Private int that contains the width. So I'm going to say W for width. And then I have, I'm going to actually make my constructor public. And then just the class name in this case, sign. I have to give it those two parameters, string message and int width. And you could use M and W as well, because I always like saying this dot M equals message, this on the left, whatever's in the parentheses on the right, this dot W equals width. So whatever's up top is on the left with a this, and whatever's in the parentheses is on the right. And that's basically all we need for the constructor. Um, and if I change it to just M and M there, this would still have worked. So this works fine. If I'm using, as long as I'm using this, uh, but I'm going to keep it the way I had it. And I'm just using M and W because I don't like writing so much, especially when I'm at the end of a test, middle of a test, and I've been writing a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to use just letters for my message and my width. Okay, so that's, those are my parameters. Okay, the width is a positive maximum number of characters that can be displayed on a single line of the sign. Okay, so now I'm thinking about it, I'm saying, okay, I got my uh, my stuff set, my basics set up. So this is the basics, these are set up. Now I just start thinking about what's what's going on here. Okay, so I have a sign display. And if, uh, so in this case, all of these have the same message. The message is 34 characters long um, and it has as many lines. So if this one has three lines, this one has two lines, this one has one line depending on the width of the sign. So in this case, the width is 15 characters. And so 15, 15, and an extra four, right? That adds up to 34. 17, that's just perfectly in half. So 17 and 17 uh, makes two lines and then 40. 34 is obviously fits into 40, so it's only one line. Okay, so it looks like I have to do some math, maybe some remainder stuff, we'll see. Um, method messages split. Only the last line may contain fewer characters of the width. Okay, so the last line, if need be, um, can have less than, it's not filled up, I guess. Um, so I just talked about the example. I think I skipped ahead without reading this because I already read it earlier today. Um, so the sign class contains two method, methods. Okay, the number of lines method returns an int. So right away I know public int number of lines. I know to write that. Uh, need to display the text on the sign. Are there anything? In, are there any parameters? Let's keep reading. In the previous previous examples, number of lines would return a three, two, and one, so like I talked about before. And I'm going to ignore get lines right now. I'm going to ignore that for now and look at just number of lines. So I look at my table of what's going on. So I call it, and I have a main method that does this as well. That calls it, and um, it has a constructor. So there's my constructor with a new keyword. And it has a string and an int. Okay, string and int, are they all just strings and int? All my constructors string and int. There's no special constructor string and int. So that still works even though it's an empty string. String and int. Okay, so I think I took care of the constructor. I have now my get number of lines. Okay, so this one has nothing, no parameters. So just get or just number of lines, number of lines, number of lines, number of lines. So it's not an um, accessor method because I have to do some stuff here. Um, I have to actually do the math here. So if I had 34 and I want to divide by 15, that gives me a remainder, right? So if, oh, but if I don't have remainder, it says you 34 divided by 17. Um, 
that gives me um, two lines, right, two perfectly. And then if I had 40, um, 34 divided by 40 would be zero with the remainder. So I need that remainder still. And then let's look at these examples here. So if I have, what is this, A, B, C, D, 2, 2, 2, that's 6, 8. 8 and 3 lines. Oh, it says over here, 8 characters with will need 3 lines if it has 3. So it would be 1, 2, 3 on the first, oh, 1, 2, 3 on the first line, and then 2, 2, 2 on the next line, and then the D, E. So basically 8 divided by 3 is 2 with the remainder. Yeah. And then it, it shows me get lines. Well, I can look at that yet. I'm focusing on the number lines. Okay, number lines. I have A, B, C, D. That's 4. Um, 4 divided by 10. What's that? 0 with the remainder. Okay, so I think I know it. I think I know that my result, the number of lines, is going to be the number of characters. So m dot length. So string method dot length divided by the width. And then if there's a remainder, so if m dot length remainder, what's that percent? Where's my percent right there? Um, is not equal to zero. Um, I'll just say greater than zero if I could type. So if my remainder is greater than zero, I'm going to add one more. And that's it. I just return that result now. So, right, if I had, what was it, divide by 15, 34 divided by 15, that's two with a remainder. 40 divided by 34, that's zero with a remainder. So if, if there's one, if there's a, if there's any remainder, not zero, obviously, but any remainder, I add one, one line, basically. So these are lines. Let's try it with this last one right here. So I have what? One, eight characters. Oh, that divides by two easily. So it's just four. Okay. That's easy. Right? So if there's no remainder, if remainder is zero, I mean, if it is zero, I'm not going to add this extra one line. So it's just straight up four. Um, so that's number of lines. I think that will work. And then the last thing we need to do is go back to the next or to the next method, get lines. So what does get lines say? Get lines says it returns a string. So public string get lines. Is there anything in the parentheses in the parameters list? Okay, no. So there's no parameter. And uh, basically you have to match the method header to match what you are expecting in this table as well. So what it says in the description and what it does in the table, so nothing in the parentheses, nothing in the parentheses here. Something in the parentheses here, I have something in the parentheses, obviously for the constructor, but just still matching up the statements that are given to me that are expected in this, uh, in this code. So then it says, returns a string containing the message broken into lines separated by semicolons. So it's kind of like Kind of like a two string, maybe sort of, um, or returns null if the message is an empty string. Okay, let's do that now. I'm gonna return null and see where I'm at. See if I got the first parts right. See if there's any errors up here. So I got the three. Okay, that looks good. One, one, zero, four. Okay, so it looks like my number of lines worked as intended. Okay, but now it's just returning null and it's not returning the strings. So it looks like every certain character I have to go through and, okay, so it's return null, obviously, um, if it's empty string. So I'm going to actually keep that and put the, if the um, m.length message length is zero, um, maybe not use brackets on this one, but I'll, I'll keep it there. So if the length is zero, return null. Okay, so that should work for this one and then return whatever on the thing, uh, everything else. So return whatever, that's the result. So I'm going to set up my remaining result to be the empty string. And then I'm just going to return result. I'm not typing it out on paper or writing on paper. So I can do that for now and check my null one. Okay, so that one's taken care of. And then, okay, there we go. So I want to go character by character, right? Character by character. But I want to have a count, just like I did in the last, in the, in the question number one. I want to be counting every every character basically. So I want to say, um, what character am I at? <clears throat> Excuse me. So int um, character, I, I'll just do C for the count I'm at. Or I'll, I'll use count again, I'll, use, I'll keep using count. So, so far I haven't counted any letters and then I'm gonna loop through for 
int i equals zero, i less than m dot length, just a normal string loop, i plus plus. And I'm using i because that's just what I normally use. And then I say, okay, what I want to do, I want to add the letter, I want to add the current character. Now, how do I do that? I say, okay, m dot, oh, that's not the m, m dot substring, i comma i plus one. So that's just normal, I'm adding every letter. That's not gonna give me the, the semicolons. Where do I add the semicolon? It says, the parameter does not include any semicolons. Okay, so that's given to me. I don't have to worry about seeing if there's any semicolons. So the first row in the preceding table, so everything on S and then a semicolon, AL please, and then we have a semicolon. So every new line, so instead of doing a slash N, we're doing a semicolon looks like. So every count, so when the count equals however wide, oh, wide, yeah, W. All right, I haven't used W yet. So if count equals W, if it's at the width, I'm going to include ooh, the result plus equals the uh, semicolon. And then I want to reset my count. Right, so every, I mean, basically this is my return. It's a carriage return. I put this down and then I, so I put the semicolon and then I go back to zero. So I'm counting back at zero. And then I have to actually count each time. So count plus plus before I forget. That way I'm counting. So I'm adding a letter and counting that letter. I almost forgot that. And then um, if the count equals the end, add a semicolon and reset the count. And I think you could have put that at the bottom. I put that at the top. I don't know why. Uh, but then I got my answers. My returns looks like it works. And don't worry, my, my, um, I like having my um, theme have pink brackets and parentheses. So that just makes everything pink in Reflet. And then I just colored the, uh, the real solutions. Going through, I'm checking to make sure that they're all correct. So it looks like this does work. So again, don't forget to return null if the length is zero. You got to return that separately. You can't return an empty string. It has to return that, that null up top. But that's the 2023 number two FRQ. Have a good day.